good morning and welcome to the final hour of the situation room this morning. Titi, mm. the proverb? Before eating, open your mouth. Before eating, open your mouth. Yes, proverb from Mauritania. The Mauritanian people are called Morite. What? Hmm? The people from Mauritania, what are they called? I don't know. Mauritanians. Sour, yes, it sounds, it works. Mm? I, I have another one for you. Okay. Yeah? Um, brothers love each other when both of them are rich. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? Mm. All right. This is uh, Moshimua Richard Onyoka speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> he is a senator for Kisi County. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I will be. I'll be. I'll be bringing one every time I come. Kabisa. I'm also hoping, hoping that Kisi. you'll allow me to be intruding. Mm. Uh, like have another one. Uh -huh. uh, one who causes others misfortune mm. also teaches them wisdom. Say it in Kikisi now. The last time you were here, you promised you the tea you that you were going to will, I will, I will, I will, I'll give you the Kisi ones. Okay. Oh, there are plenty. <laughs> there are, oh my God. Let Don't me, do that politician thing. No, Richard. let me pick one that pick one um, now. You in future. Uh, 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 uh. Next time I'll see you. <laughs> let, let me nine. give you, let me give you one. Van uh Tobamo. -huh. Mm. Nyama mm. ya chire rino. Nyama ya Yes. Nyama ya chire rino. Yeah, vantobamo nyama ya chire rino. The same people I like somebody who has eaten meat and it's gotten into their into their teeth. Mm. The pain of that the meat mother. being Extra. in between your gums mm. explains the relationship that we have with ourselves as families. That's a good one. Mm. Vantobamo. The same people act like meat that has entered into the gum. Mm. Okay. So? So I'll be bringing you the kissy ones. <laughs> Rino is gum or teeth? Rino is teeth. Tooth. Teeth. Tooth. tooth. Yeah. Yes. Mm. You know, gum without teeth, really, nothing is going to get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Good one. Senator, how are you? This time we're calling you Senator. I'm so happy to here, see yeah. all of you. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm. No, I, I actually made it. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. <laughs> I made here it. Here you are. <laughs> the senator representing the great people of Kisi oh, County. Kisi, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> how was that race? And this is going to be my fourth term. Mm. As being, a elected, ele being elected consecutively. Mm. So again, it's I'm really, really humbled. Mm. Uh, and now I happen to be the oldest and most experienced Kisi politician practicing. <laughs> I am now, <laughs> you see, the, the, the older generation, you know, this, this thing of, of you, you become the older generation. Yes. Mm. Okay. They, they actually, the younger politicians, find me so obnoxious uh, they tell me you waste time you are just too slow you are <laughs> now you're old now, now i'm old <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's a good place it, it, it's really fascinating to see it from that point of view mm -hmm. yeah when you see the younger ones and and you see what happened in kissing and there are very many new mps from Kisi for the Lab. first time uh there was a generational change mm -hmm. the youngest politician from Kisi is now 34. Mm -hmm. The oldest, this? Uh, this is, there's a gentleman called Jan Mr. Barongo. It's Barongo. Yes, mm -hmm. Barongo is the member of parliament from a place called Bomachoge. Mm -hmm. a really young man, he's an engineer, mm -hmm. and this was his first shot. And uh, we were with the same, we are same team with him, he mm -hmm. was in ODM. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a, uh, they're young, then there is a young man, one from UDA, it's called Jafo Gamba. Mm -hmm. Really talented young man, mm -hmm. very, very, very versatile. Um, also, very interesting, he's 34 also. Mm -hmm. um, now, in the, the whole of that team, I think... <laughs> you can say be, it, it's okay. I bequeath myself that title. Mm. I'm now the oldest. You're the elder <laughs> of the group.
right? <laughs> and there's even a nominated senator still yes. from Kisi. Yes, yes, the the young lady, um, Gloria. Uh, there's there's a, there's a lady called Gloria, and mm. there's another lady again who came in after Soipan went to the to become a cabinet mm. uh, secretary. She Esther she, Esther Okenyuri. Okenyuri. Yeah, she's mm. also young. I think she's about 33, 34 around there. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. Now you know what the job you have to do. Yes is to guide them is to be the elder is to listen to them as they tell you you're being too slow ask them so how would you like us to move not what, what, is, what is uh, this is not slow <laughs> latif let me tell you something that is really interesting for me uh, about uh, five of these guys who got elected from kisi all of them give me the credit which i am really humble to accept that i have been their mentor mm. right. that i've been as i've been running um, even when i make my speeches even the way i behave politically mm. they've been picking the bits and pieces mm. and we are very good friends all of them we are really really good friends and it's true they are constantly now beginning to ask me what what should somebody do how do you handle this and i've told them there isn't much you're going to do just make sure if you have cdf please give it to the owners mm. make sure you do projects make sure you protect the money the voters are always rational if you keep a good record and you do work for the public um they will reward you they mm. will understand when you make a mistake and you tell them i'm sorry i didn't understand this you can forgive me they also understand mm. yeah wise words from kisi supremo <laughs> richard and yonka <laughs> actually that is it you know the mm. if you look at the backyard that richard comes from even being elected twice is unbelievable is, is a feat is a feat three times now <laughs> that's a, four times you have to ask okay surely there's a formula you've gotten right yeah, yeah. because how many people because you have to ask the question how many people do we know in your neck of the woods yeah who have been elected four times mm. yeah and different parties yes yes that's another thing i came yeah. in with pdp then <laughs> I went, I came in for Kenya, yeah. and then I got ODM, mm -hmm. and now. <laughs> mm. Okay, so now you're here. Yes. You know, as senator, yes. still in parliament. Yes. The last time you were here, you said some really interesting things. Uh, one of them being, you know, the unseriousness of parliament. Mm. 13th parliament now is in. Yes. Uh, there are certain things which still remain the same. Mm -hmm. Even as we go towards these conversations of how Kenya will deal with other countries legislatively and things like that, mm -hmm. based on, you know, visits that were made yesterday. Mm -hmm. But there's still some things that are hanging over the head of parliament. Yes. 12th to 13th. Mm -hmm. What are your views about that? And how can some of those things now change? Newer legislators, younger legislators, hopefully, you know, legislators who have a different skew towards the country's government governance. Uh, I think that's a good question. My my observation is that I, number one, I think my decision to join the Senate was a very good one mm. for the simple reason that um, uh, at the Senate level, the discussions we're having at, are at another level. Mm. Um, as when I was in the National Assembly uh, and all this period that I've stayed in the National Assembly, everything at the national assembly is more like uh it's 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 mechanical mm. in other words you you go there in the morning if there's a session in the morning the discussions you're going to have are very basic um and the difference between the senate and the national assembly is that national assembly the people there are about 370. Mm -hmm. at the senate we are about 72. 70, yeah. And at any one time, we, we are in the chamber. If you look at the number of senators who are in the chamber, we are, we are normally not more than 40. Mm. So the conversations which we're having and the discussions we're having are much more intellectual in nature. And um, they are much more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, the last, should I say, three, three uh, weeks we've been meeting at the Senate. We are discussing, for example, mental health. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the National Assembly, that is something that we have never, mm. ever since I became an MP, we mm -hmm. have never discussed that. Mm -hmm. uh, what is also interesting for me is that when I was a member of parliament, I did not really care what the Senate does. Mm. Yeah, we hardly, 
hardly any member. In mm-hmm. fact, you, we despise the you Senate. You despise the Senate, yes. We look down upon the, the lower Senate. House. Mm-hmm. The lower house. And yet in reality, mm-hmm. now it's when it's, it's beginning to dawn on me mm-hmm. that um, some of the things that the senators were discussing and talking about, mm-hmm. the expectation of the, the expectations of the Senate, uh, we used to dismiss them. Mm. And in reality, now I'm beginning to realize, oh my God, if it wasn't for the Senate, devolution would actually be a mess. Uh, if it's not for the Senate, um, we wouldn't be discussing the, the very deep uh, critical issues about um, the sharing of the revenue mm. at the national level, mm. um, the responsibilities of the Senate. Mm. Uh, the, the the good news that has come out is the the Supreme Court rulings on the responsibilities of the Senate has really changed who we are, mm. because the Senate now has been given responsibility. I can summon a governor, and if he doesn't come, then I will ask my committee to summon them. Mm. And if they come, they have a lot of explanation to do. Mm. Uh, the other issue that has come up is that, um, you know, before we never used to look at it that a senator is actually somebody like in Kisi now, I'm really elected by nine constituencies. Mm. So there are certain issues about equity and fairness that are coming up. We are saying you can't have, and, and this is not because we are greedy and we want more money. It's just that the argument that you can't have a member of parliament who's been chosen from one constituency earning the same salary like me, who has been chosen from nine constituencies. Mm. Then the other issue... <laughs> <City is laughing. laughs> that, no, no, I, I'm, I'm laughing at the simplicity of the logic. <laughs> yeah, it is so simple. Yes. It is exactly the same thing with the women rep. Mm. Yes. Why would you expose a lady who goes out on campaigns in nine an constituencies and then bring her and you are paying her 610,000 shillings, which looks a lot of money. Mm. And yet this lady is actually managing nine constituencies. And yet that is the same salary you're mm. giving a member of parliament. Mm-hmm. Equitably. Mm. So you should earn like governors. Yes. Mm. Or there should be something that is different Mm. that makes it possible for this lady or Mm. indeed for me as a senator. Because my job is no longer about Kituru Church South where Mm. I used to be a member of parliament. I have eight other constituencies Mm. where I must attend funerals, Mm. where I must visit to go and hold meetings, public hearings, where I am going to... it is nearly an impossible job. But and those yet, things are all covered by, you know, the tra- travel allowance that you get. They have, uh, the SRC yeah. has taken all that. Yeah. What? Everything now. When I travel, I was, we were supposed to go to, to Tharakanithi because uh-huh. they are having a problem on where the county officer should be, whether it's the Tharakanithi Nithi Township mm-hmm. or which should be another place. Mm. And they're Marimanti. telling me... Was it Marimanti? No, not Marimanti. Yes, no. I think it's some name like that. Mm. It's a very difficult name. And uh, they are telling me my per diem is half per diem and they are paying me 3,600 per night. Yes. Yeah. And this is what we are telling SRC. You can get a place for cheaper. For 1,000. You see how it's reasoning? Assume I wasn't going to Tharakanithi. Uh, mm. Meaning it's standard whether you're going to Tharakanithi. Or you're going to going Mombasa. To, mm. Yes. So That is where we are. Yeah, mujipange buwana. Hakuna pesa iti. <laughs> anyway, so the, the SRC has basically cut back on the amount to be paid. Mm-hmm. And then they have increased their own salaries themselves. The mm-hmm. SRC themselves. Yes. All uh, right. Mm-hmm. The commissioners have doubled their salaries. Uh, they have given themselves two cars. Have, mm-hmm. I mean, this is the... the I, 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 I think the ad uh, stick was set early on by, by, um, by, by Parliament. Parliament. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they realized... No, get get is, in and <laughs> sort your bacon first. <laughs> this is the way this to is, go. This apparently they got I it. I mean, the National <laughs> Assembly, the first, they, they come in... We added the, the, the salary. What first thing... <laughs> Mm. Senator, by the way, you've, you've raised an important point, which then we can actually discuss. Yes. Which is, even the president, when yes. he was addressing the joint sitting of parliament, mm. he said, let's find modalities of establishing a Senate fund. Yes. What's that all about and how important would it be? Okay. Uh, the Supreme Court has now made a ruling that I am given the responsibility of oversighting um, own revenue funds. That is money that is collected from the markets mm-hmm. and the shops within any county. Mm-hmm. It has uh, made a ruling that I can now access each and every document that emanates from the county assembly and the county government Mm -hmm. from the governor's office for me to oversight i i need to do the human resource um, audits 
to find out how many workers we have. You know, the reason why you're having this thing of ballooning of of payments or salaries to workers in the county assembly is because nobody ever used to ask. Mm. Mm. Now, you have given me that responsibility. Tell me how I do it. By summoning. You just said you have the powers to summon. Um, let me so if it's about uh, own source revenue and where the money has gone, yes. If it's about uh, the you know tough complement of the set of of the county and all, yes. the independent offices that have all that work. Yes. There's the office of the auditor general. That is true. There's a county assembly and its own yes. reports. Mm. There are other institutions. Mm. So all you do is consume the reports from those institutions. Why those, you, those institutions. You, are you saying that you want to go and do the audit yourself? Those institutions don't exist. In don't exist. Kila Mutu Asimame. No, that is what my governor Simba was doing, which mm. was good initially, but mm. I'm sure he's shifted away from that. He mm. was just trying to dramatically make uh, the point mm. that here you are, you have a certain number of employees of the county government who are supposed to be drivers. Yeah, but no, we understand. And, and yet the, the vehicles... To the are, point. Yeah, the point I'm making is this. What, what do you need so that you can get that job done? Number one, mm. what does the constitution say? If we are going to discuss any matter pertaining to what the public expects, I'm going to hold public hearings. How do I hold them? How do I hire the hall? How do I get the seats? How do I plan? What is the facilitation plan? Exactly. Right. It, it, there's nothing like that. Mm. Number two, the truth is, if you look at the expectation now, it is true that in my office, I'm going to have auditors. In my office, I'm going to have a quantity surveyor mm. who, when I go and find that a building that has been given 150 million and these people have been paid 110 and the building is at the foundation. How do you quantify that? How do I then take that report and interface it with what the governor's team has given to me? Mm. And the, the, the engagement between what the senator does and the governor, it's not supposed to be adversarial. Mm. It is supposed to be a relationship where actually the governor ac and allows me access to what the members of the county, not even the governor, it's the county assembly. Mm. What the members of the county assembly, because they are also members of the oversighting yep. team. Yep. They need to give me the access for me to go to each and every ward to actually find out what is going on. Now, when I go to the ward, I'm supposed to meet the public. Mm. And like this financial year now, the, 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 uh, there's, a, I think, a supplementary budget that is coming to the Kisi County government. So mm. what I'm expecting is once they finish with the supplementary and they're ready to move, mm. imagine I have now to go to the ground. Mm. And I'm going to each and every ward and I'm going to tell the voters the amount of money that their county assembly has allocated for your ward is, let's say, 50 million. Mm. And from their budget, they have told me they want to do three things. Is that agreeable with you? I mm. hope it is agreeable. If they tell me it's not, then I will have to put it down and say even the public hearings were, that were held, mm. the public was not comfortable with the decision which was made. Then we follow it backwards. Yeah. Now, where, once that has been done, and this, the voters have discussed and agreed with me. What then do you do with those reports? Those reports have to go to the county assembly, and some of them they come to the national, to the national assembly, which is at the senate. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does the parliamentary service commission do with the budget that it has? The parliamentary service commission is the one which handles our salaries. It's the one which handles our payments in terms of uh, allowances. Of course, they've really been removed now. Mm -hmm. I think they are the ones that uh, manage. Um, uh, the, the travel. Okay. The Parliamentary Service Commission is the one which then facilitates uh, members of the National Assembly and the Senate mm. on all these things, the, our mortgages, which are loans, yeah. and all these other payments. So who pays the... You get an assistant. Yes. Right? Yes. Who pays that assistant, the Parliamentary Service Commission? He is paid by me. No. It's the assistant is paid from my salary. Now, because I've come in as a, as a senator, now I'm actually allowed to have a PA. I'm actually mm. allowed to employ four people. Okay. My driver, mm. I pay him directly from my pocket. Mm. Uh, before, when I was a member of parliament, now it is PSC which will pay. Okay. I have a personal assistant, I have a secretary, and I have uh, one person who is supposed to be like a watchman or something. Okay. Yes. So the fund. Yes. What will it do? So it will uh, be the a fund, fund that then. Exactly. What the fund will do is in Kisi, I have got 45 wards. The amount of money that the fund 
I mean, they, that, that is going to be part of the fund mm. will have to be equitably distributed amongst the 45 wards and make sure that I'm going to participate and make sure I hold public hearings and make sure that, in fact, we are going to have offices. Mm -hmm. Because if you have an office, an oversight office, which is managing oversight, at the, mm, at the, the, county, has, the county government has a sub-county admin. Mm. That sub-county administrator is the one who is at the ward. Yes. There has to be interfacing. Mm. As I said, the relationship was never meant to be adversarial. Mm. So my office will have to be talking with the people of sub-county admin, the, the uh, sub-county administration, asking them, the, can you give us a report which are the projects which we are expecting this financial year? Then we'll run through them. Mm -hmm. And then we are, in fact, now going to be holding meetings and participatory meetings with both teams, the governor's office and the senator's office mm -hmm. and the county assembly in the ward. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to engage and start discussing what is it that has been done right, what is it that is not being done right, and what can we change? So this is not going to be a CDF? No, it's not. I do no development project. We will not be coming to ask where a senator you receive money, where no. does it go? No, it is basically recurrent expenditure. Do you see the people understanding that when you have an MP for Kitutu Church Ch South yes. who has projects yes, and then you have a senator who was a former MP here yes. who used to do projects and now he has money but we are not seeing any projects. I will explain this. It, yeah. it, it was very difficult, even us as members of parliament, to ask, to understand what really is this thing you call oversighting and what is our responsibility because of the separation of powers mm -hmm. between uh, the role of the executive and the role of the other arms of government. Mm -hmm. for, for us, the, the, the word fund, I mean, the uh, governor's fund is going to be a token amount which is going to facilitate for me to go around and... And, and visit projects which are supposed to be done by the county government. Mm -hmm. um, what we are struggling with right now, and, and this is something that uh, was being discussed even yesterday, we don't know whether CDF is actually going to survive. So there's a possibility that members of parliament are also going to be in a position where they are given an oversight fund. Their job is basically just to go see the projects, they will not have any impact on that. They will not tender for this project and they'll not do anything about it. The question we are asking is, do you take this money which was under CDF fund, take it mm. to, for example, the county commissioners? Mm. <laughs> All right? Mm. Which means we are going back to where we used to be as DCs and mm. uh, provincial commissioners, you remember. So the question that is coming up now is what do we do with the fund? The fund. And formerly currently known as the national government exactly. constituency development exactly. because which is we are fearing national government development the, yes the fear we are having right now is that uh, <laughs> the supreme court even if we were to pass through a constitutional amendment of trying to make sure that that fund is actually ex executed mm. the supreme court will refuse again and say the constitution, the constitution is that, is that doesn't allow you to touch this money <laughs> so you know that's where we are <laughs> Okay, yeah. we still have a lot more to discuss uh, with the Honorable Richard Onyonka, the Senator of the Great People of Kisi County. Thank you. Who is here today? Is a Kisi Supremo? <laughs> not really, not really. Uh, no, you've told us, Bana. <laughs> no, Kisi Supremo. no, no, no. I say it with a lot of humility. <laughs> yeah. I have been given this responsibility, which mm. you know can be withdrawn. Anyway. He is a humble Supremo <laughs> of the Kisi. <laughs> His, Eric is not letting go of Sorry. Kisi politics. <laughs> this is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. The Honorable Senator for Kisi County, Richard Nyonka, is our guest. As we continue the conversation, he's a former MP for Kitutu Church South, elected by those people three times. Yes. And he was once the Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs for the Republic of Kenya. Let's talk about uh, what Ruto has been doing in, in, uh, with the foreign issues. Eh? Mm -hmm. Somebody is sharing a meme on Twitter. Yes. South Africa is about to become the new Naivasha. <laughs> they don't know us, those people. Benchmark they are not ready for us. Now, with the visit by President Cyril Ramaphosa, the agreement is that you actually don't need to pay for or apply for a visa. You get a visa, go to South Africa up to what? Six 90 months? days. Nin 90, 90 days, days. Mm. right? Mm. Wait, so how do you get a visa? You go to the High Commission through the VFS, you get your 
Visa? That's it. Simple as that. No payment. You're all right. Mm. It's and how long does it take? It's a free it? visa, no not problem. a free plane ticket. Got it. Got it. But <laughs> yeah. uh, you apply for it. Yes. How long before you actually get it? It's days. Uh, we're looking at less than a week to get it. Mm. Mm. That was that was the issue earlier. Mm. Is is that is that the new deal? I just want to confirm as we continue. But more, more your the, uh, quick uh, that's uh, reaction my, to this. My experience to uh, about South Africa. Yes. If you remember, I don't know the Kenyans of this memory. Mm. Um, about seven, eight years ago, mm. uh, if I remember clearly, the South Africans actually moved in uh, in a big way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They brought in their shops, Shoprite. By that time, Curry Four was South Africa based. Mm. It hadn't uh, gotten Kenyan investors. Yep. Um, there were many South African companies that wanted to come and set up business in Kenya. Yep. And one of the issues that they raised, because those companies all folded up, mm. and one of the issues that they raised was that, number one, uh, the Kenyan market was completely unpredictable. Mm. Uh, you remember we had uh, the beer industry. We had the company from South Africa, which was South selling, African uh, breweries. Yes, yeah. South African breweries. Sub Miller. They, yes, Sub Miller. Miller. Yes, mm. they closed. And they said, uh, we basically adore uh, or we have a, 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 an unfair business practice gallo yeah. agenda where uh, Kenya Revenue Authority was unpredictable. Mm. They would go and tax these guys unnecessarily, basically just to discourage competition. Yeah. The second issue they raised, and uh, I, I, many Kenyans don't like to discuss it, is mm. that Kenyan workers, majority of our workers, are very dishonest. The South Africans actually raised that issue. Mm. They said many of their shops that they were setting up, uh, they didn't understand how you have this shop where 90% of your workers are basically pilfering things from the, from the <laughs> shops. And, and every year the losses they were ha having were crazy. And yet the other companies which were running in Kenya uh, were succeeding, were thriving. were thriving. In that case, it was Nakumat. But mm. you see, Nakumat also ended up tanking. Mm. So there's a question about the business model in terms of big companies coming to Kenya to set up. Yep. Uh, and and South Africa, South Africans have always felt mm. that our business uh, model is against foreigners. Yeah. And I don't know whether we have succeeded in breaking that ice. Um, the South African giving us free visas, this is something we should have done 10 years ago. Mm. It's actually visa free, Yeah, just to clarify. So yes. you don't actually, you don't apply for a visa. Yeah, you, you just go. to South Africa, go board a plane, go. And you sign a, a document so when you... Wait, 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 you, pre wait, wait. you present yourself at the airport. It's just yes. like me boarding a bus and going to Mombasa. Yes. yes. Mm. Okay, so Fika Kule, okay, it's just stamped. Stamped your entered. passport. But you must go with your passport. Yes. You don't just show up and say, I'm here. I'm from Kenya. No, no. I don't, I don't carry my ID. Mm. No, please. You must actually go with your passport. <laughs> I believe that, that you can do ID, with the, in the East have, African. Within the East African community. You ID can use your ID now. to go to Uganda. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We use but IDs not, to not, Uganda yeah. now. But you enter there, so it's visa free. And you stay mm. there for 90 days yeah. without having to. But after 90 days now, if you want to stay longer than you. the 90 days, mm. then you apply for a visa. Yes. <laughs> The, the East African... Uh, within 90 days, within a year. The East African passport, does it work in South Africa? Mm -hmm. No. It, no, it doesn't. Hmm? It, it, it East works. African passport. It's, East it's African ESC. Passport. Mm. It's just only yeah. East Africa. It, yes. Mm. Okay. But you can use it. I think it could. The I'm not ESC sure. passport. It could because we use it when you're going it's, to live in the US. It's your international passport. It's, it's your international, international passport, passport it but yes. it does not allow you the freedoms mm. within East Africa in other regions. You cannot just use your east african passport and go to uh, south africa and stay there beyond 90 days without getting a visa you can go to uganda and be there for whatever business that for you have all, to yeah. do but you cannot you cannot do that in south africa you can travel with it but it doesn't give you the provisions that the east african passport would okay what are you asking is that what you're asking mm. Mm. Yes. okay seeking clarity sour mm. Mm. south african businesses yes have invested um, a lot in this country. Mm -hmm. If you look at the balance of trade between Kenya and South Africa, mm -hmm. it is heavily skewed yes. towards South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's easier for a South African business to come into Kenya, to, mm -hmm. for goods to enter Kenya, but it's very difficult mm -hmm. for Kenyan businesses to 
get foreign to South Africa. Yes, Now those are some of the conversations that have been taking place when mm-hmm. Jacob Zuma visited Kenya in 2016 mm-hmm. with the Uhuru going to South Africa earlier last year, late mm-hmm. last year mm-hmm. with Ramaphosa coming now and meeting with, with Ruto. It's the same issue that has been discussed. Yes. What needs to happen to unlock this and you know just allow us now we have visa free entry that is so you see what happens when you are having these uh, bilateral discussions about trade mm. i'll give you an example uh we are going to discuss uh, give you an example of rwanda mm-hmm. it it took i think it took kenya something like 12 years for us to reach a stage where we had bilaterally agreed with them for us to be able for example to ship our milk to to rwanda, rwanda. And the reason for that is the Rwandese government had a policy of wanting to make sure that its uh, milk production through animal husbandry mm. and making sure that their agriculture So they protect grows, their own sector. They were protecting their own. And of course, I'm sure you know that most of the animals actually were from Kenya. Mm. <laughs> and they were bought from me and taken to Rwanda. Now Rwanda is actually self-sufficient in milk production. For me, The observation I made when I was in foreign affairs, if a country wanted to negotiate seriously bilateral agreements to make sure that it gets advantage in doing trade, it can do it. Mm. But if a country doesn't take those discussions in a serious manner and keep pushing until you reduce the period which you take for the discussion to take place so that you can then be given this um, right, mm. I call it a right, for you to export materials to a country like South Africa or whichever country. We will be where Kenya has been in many, many, many of these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same issue. Uh, we are having a problem with Uganda. Mm. Uh, if you look at the terms of trade between Kenya and Uganda, Uganda right now has surpassed us on what they are actually exporting to us. If you look at Tanzania, it is the same thing that is happening. And yet when you talk to Kenyan business people, they tell you how in Tanzania uh, we are being harassed, our workers are being mistreated, and yet we are supposed to have a free market movement of labor and, and all those things. Mm. So it is the seriousness, and I'm hoping that President Ruto will be serious enough uh, to come up with those agreements which are enforceable. If you want a country to respect you, then you would have to uh, b- b- lay down the rules, accept the the rules as they have been set up within our East African region, because we are part of the East African community. Mm. Uh, we need to engage more with SADAC. You see, we, we are having ESCC, uh, the East African community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we have SADAC in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Then we have uh, the one in Commerce. West Africa, mm-hmm. Ecowas. 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 Then, then you have yeah, And then we have all, and yet we are talking about Africa trade. Yep. For me, what, what I, would, I hope uh, President Ruto will do is, if anything, his team, and I've seen two, three people whom he's working with are very good. Uh, Madam Juma, she's one of the best diplomats I've ever met. Mm. If they can pick him, and he runs with this one, of coming out and telling all our African people, listen, this, this nonsense of having roadblocks for us to sell things to each other, and yet 90% of the products we are getting from Europe Yep. are easily accessible to our markets. Mm. That logic has, has, has always defeated us as Africans. Mm. And, and uh, one of the, 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 the other issue I wanted to raise is mm. that uh, we have a South Sudan now being a member of the East African community. Um, uh, Congo yep. is yes. the biggest thing that ever happened. I don't know that Kenyans understand what it means. Congo imports each and every single item they use in their country except 2%. Mm. Uh, Everything, milk, sugar, soda, bread. Kiberit. Can you imagine uh, p- p- people from France mm. put bread in an aeroplane to take it to Congo, <laughs> to Kinshasa? Uh, Why can't we get bread, Kenyans going and setting up uh, bakeries. bread making mm. bakery. bakeries in, 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 in Kinshasa? Mm. I mean, the, the, the opportunities are so huge. And yet... You don't have leadership. 
But isn't that often the issue, Senator? Yes. That what are we saying here? That the opportunities are there. Yes. But isn't that then what legislation yes. and uh, oversight yes. then would do? Connect the dots between the opportunity mm. that exists mm. and the implementation of such it's activity. Mm. So I, I hear what you're saying, but then I'm going to just take it and throw it back to me. Back to you. I, ag I agree with because you. Because this is the opportunities that we say, and these are things that ought to be happening. Uh, but we seem to be, you know, dancing in the puddles. Meanwhile, we could be swimming in the oceans. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. If, if, if you wanted Kenyans to trade, uh, of course, legislation has to be there. Mm -hmm. We have to have laws which are effective in terms of implementing whatever strategy or po government policy we want to hold. Mm. We, we have not done well, mm. but we have done some. I, I don't want to give up on my country so much. Mm. We have done some. Mm. My feeling right now is we can do more mm. and we can do better. All right? Now, if it means we are going to come up and set up legislation, which then, for example, uh, the Kenyan government doesn't have an exim bank. So how does a Kenyan who wants to go to Congo mm. to set up a business, how is he going to transact and make sure that the business actually takes off and the bank helps him to get the money or the foreign exchange that this person wants for him to be able to? But if you go to all the countries, China has an exim bank, Egypt has an exim bank, um, most of the European countries have exim banks. Mm. That's the export import banks. Mm. We need to now rethink that. We used to have an exim bank, then it was abused. A long time ago, around mm. 1983, 84, yes. The trade bank was an oh, exim bank. Trade bank was an exim yes. Bank. It was it was allowed by the national by the central bank of Kenya through of course the treasury to give money to Kenyans who wanted to go and set up businesses yeah. abroad. Mm. But you see Kenyans being the way we are. Yeah. People picked the money and they just left. They set up nothing. <laughs> yeah, they set up nothing. <laughs> and we didn't have a way of verification. Mm. Uh, we didn't have a partnering bank. All right, these are things I think we need to now begin to look at so that we can then begin to encourage Kenyans, those who may want to go and do business out mm. there, mm. for them to be allowed to. But you know, when you talk about it, there's, you are, you, I am seeing a deliberateness in maintaining the status quo because yes yes amidst all this there are entities that are doing businesses yes across our borders yes and they seem to be doing it successfully now the question is are we saying that what we need to do is open up this scope even further mm. or are we saying that if they indeed are roadblocks that they should be removed and then the, the question is where are the roadblocks and can they actually be removed? Because if you have roadblocks mm. and yet there are people doing business, it means there are people who, who are already benefiting. Very true. Are uh, they willing to allow other people to enjoy the same benefits that they're enjoying? If I had an answer to that question, I would most probably be a very rich guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the observation I have made, mm. the, the, the observation I've made has been, uh, I'll ask you, why... I mean, Kenya is a big market by any standard. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really a big economy mm -hmm. by any standard. Mm -hmm. But the question that I keep asking myself is very simple. Mm -hmm. Why is it that in Kenya, every single report you have, every single, if you go to the treasury, if you go to the former ministry of trade and sit down and look at the reports that were written for the last 35 years, the solutions are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that is supposed to encourage Kenyans for our trade to grow. I mean, how many times have we been told our electricity is too expensive? <laughs> but what is the problem? The electricity is expensive because there are individuals and business people in this country and cartels that are deliberately making sure that our power is actually expensive. Mm. So you have many of these companies that have been doing businesses in Kenya that are have been employing Kenyans, many of them are reconsidering because they are finding that it is, you are going to pay half the power mm. in Uganda, and that's why some of them are moving to Uganda, than in Kenya. And yet, our power is not necessarily hydro, 
we have solar energy we have um, geothermal, geothermal. We, have we are actually electricity sufficient mm. we have more than 7000 uh megawatts of power mm. we have power to run an electric an electric train and then you saw the other day what did we do with sgr we went for diesel mm. And yet, once you go for diesel, the damn thing runs for eight hours from Mombasa to Nairobi. Mm. If we had an electric, uh, an electric uh, railway line, which it was meant to be, you'd be leaving Mombasa to Nairobi at one and a half hours. Mm. A container going to Kampala up to the Busia border would take two and a half hours. In terms of business, if people can understand what that means, then you understand what the problems are with our country. Mm. That... I really hope mm. that President Ruto's responsibility is to get out of the comfort zone that Kenyans have been in. This notion that, you know, Kenya, we have everything, we can manufacture stuff, we have... We, we, in Kenya, you can do anything you want. And we are located. As well. And we are, yes. And yet, if you look at even our location itself, we should have... We should be having so much advantage on everything from tourism mm -hmm. to the health sector to education. I mean, when was the last time you had uh, uh, students from Rwanda or from Uganda or Uganda coming to Kenya to study? It's the they stopped. It's the other way around. It's the other way, it's the other way around. around. Now our students are going. going to Uganda. If today you ask me where my child would go to university, I'll tell them University of Kigali, one of the best in the world right now. Why? Because the standards are not. If you go to the place, even you look at the way the place is managed. Even you listen to the Kenyan lecturers all there. They tell you guys, these people are at another level. Everything in Rwanda is ICT based. Okay. Now, it's clear that we can and see... And it's Kenyans who set up. Yeah. It's in a Thank you. Dr. Shemu Chodo yeah. who you read, set up. You read the my Rwandese mind. The ICT. Okay. It is Dr. So Kelo who set up. So what the... is barring those things from happening now? You can have a wonderful idea. You say we can actually have these things implemented in country, but then again, it goes back to legislation. It goes back to sharing some of these ideas. It goes back to the implementation of some of these things, which seems to be the bane of the existence of some of these issues that we hear and that we see. Implementation. Oh, somebody who is supposed to do something. Somebody then who is interested in their own, who is pushing their own selfish interests. But then we, we look at the examples and they are shining examples of how it can actually be here. Why? I will, the only hope I have mm. right now, and I've really been thinking about this, mm. it is actually the county governments. The feeling I have now uh. is that the national government might be such a monolith, mm. it is impossible to even shift it by two inches. So what is going to make Kenya competitive is when different county governments are going to deliberately Deliberate. Look at what has happened in, in Kisumu. I'm sure you, you've been in Kisumu when you're going home. Mm -hmm. the, the damn place is clean. I mean, it was like, I mean, cleaning a town has been an issue. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like somebody needs to write a PhD <laughs> this is to collect all the garbage in Kisumu town. I mean, if you go to Kisumu today, you actually want to walk. Mm. I want to get out of my car and walk. And what Anyang has done is simple. Just make sure you have people who are willing to implement projects where you are going to do certain things which are going to make sure that your county looks and, 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 and becomes uh, something that you're looking at. Mm. I mean, let's look at the issue of Lake Victoria. Mm. We can't even manage to, to get uh, fish uh processed and delivered to markets in a healthy sanitized manner and i mean there are certain things i have a feeling right now that if we ca if if certain kenyans of good faith yeah. can deliberately make a decision to do certain things correctly and I believe that the county government might end up being the route we are taking mm. then Kenya will actually change. Then Look at when Gilu started doing this thing of uh of of textile, uh, of textile. Mm. i was happy when i saw Gashawa say you know this thing of uh, of uh, of uh, mitumba clothes i mean nani uh, moses kuria mm. it's a good idea i mean yes you 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 are uh, you you Promote want local yes what is difficult with going local i mean uh, my brother look at this is this is uh, shonwa this the the suit you see i'm wearing uh. is is been shonwa by a kenyan mm. and it's only 12000 shillings 
Okay. Why are we buying suits from uh, Dubai costing 120? You'll, you'll give us a plug. I mean, these this, this are the point. These are the issues we are raising. Mm. Why is it so difficult mm. for Kenyans uh, to do what is so simplistically realistic? Tell us why. I, I don't understand. If I had that, I would be. I told you, I would be rich. Mm. We're looking forward to the day when all these things happen. Okay, Moses Kuria has said one, two, twice. We are moving into promoting local textile industry, yeah, so that it grows. Let's see what he does. Mm. Um, the only thing he didn't tell me is uh, I don't know where the cotton is. Is, is the how? <laughs> <No>. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish he had started by saying yeah. that the government is going to plant cotton in the whole of the Nyanza region, eastern region, and coast. So you know, that like then we have the raw material to go mm. to bed. That uh, yeah. the cotton can actually grow in Kwale. I was yeah. shocked. Mm. I didn't know. Mm. And Kilifi, I didn't know. They actually used to have big uh, co cotton, cotton ginning. Mm. Yes, yeah. in, in Kuala, yes. Moshimua, time is up. Oh my God. Imagine, I, just mm. like that. <laughs> come again soon. Yes? I will come. Yeah, yeah. You, you're a senator now. You have a lot to talk about, especially on that issue of supporting counties to, to be, be the, the driver yes. of Absolutely. Kenya's development. Yes. Senator Richard Onyonka is a senator from Kisi County. He humbly accepts... <laughs> <laughs> the, the title the title <laughs> of the kc supremo <laughs> latif thank you thank you all of you i am now back so mm. when you need me i can always mm. come and uh let's share i i missed i really missed your show Kabisa. i'm very happy to